Hello and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. Today we're going to be playing through the Battle of Yarmouth, sending our fledging fleet to take on a British man of war who has been patrolling the coast. We are going to be outmanned and outgunned here. Um, I've got two possible strategies I'm going to try. We'll see which one ends up working out for us in the end. I purchased an unrated cutter to use as a fire ship, and I'm also bringing along a troop ship in case we're able to board. Let's see how it goes. We are searching for the British man of war for a second week. Suddenly in the early morning, we hear a cannonade in the fog. Sailing closer, we found our old acquaintance, the armored merchantman Minerva. It looks like things are going bad for her. We must save this merchant ship from the British. All right, so we have, let's see. Get our bearings real quick. So I've got the Newberry and the Speedy, neither of which look too tough. And we have Hancock, Daring, and I forget which other one, Virginia. Um, all three very capable ships sailing to meet them. So let's get these guys moving full speed. And close the gap with some accelerated time. Now I'm going to try to position us downwind a little bit, take advantage of range here. Daring, I just added an armored hull, thinking that maybe I might need her to get close to the uh, man of war for um, to pre prepare for a boarding action, or at the very least provide a distraction while my fire ship gets close. Let's slow down here while well, it looks like we've got a favorable position on Newberry. I haven't taken to upgrading my cannons as much as I usually do in this game. They're not as... Uh, I haven't had the money really to spend on them. So I don't have fully upgraded guns, not as heavy as I usually do. Um, and I like to usually play with range more than damage output. Um, but I haven't uh, upgraded those much. So we'll get Virginia in range now. What does Virginia have? Nine pounders, but 28 of them. And there we go. Newberry is taking some damage from us. She is faltering a little bit. And we have yet another barrage going toward her. Let's see if in all of this we can get her to bail. I'd love to capture a ship here. There we go. Keep that morale damage coming. Depending how this barrage goes, I might turn with Virginia and chase her down. There we go. We got a mast down. Let's see. Can we clean up the crew with Virginia? Yes. I think we should be able to see this volley go through. All right. Our second group is here. Good. Good. Let's make sure we're in range. All right, so we have the, um, what is it, the uh, Man of War coming in. Our second group has arrived. Oh, I did not notice Minerva was able to sail. Let's get her out of there as quick as we can. And then let's get Vengeance up on the Newberry. Andrew Doria is, let's see. Don't believe, no, the Dolphin is my um, fire ship. Let's have Vengeance board. I think Virginia is hitting Vengeance more than Newberry. And Speedy is already faltering. Let's see who else is coming up here. 
we've got Marigold, Trave, and Tireless. Milford is just going to be a challenging ship to take on. No, no way around that. All right, let's switch to Grape. If we were able to get another salvo off at Newberry. Daring is our heaviest armored ship. So if someone's got to be taking uh, a lot of fire, it should be Daring. And it looks like our third group is almost here. So let's get Virginia out of the way, hopefully. Looks like we're having some navigational difficulties. Vengeance is now boarding. And Hancock is dueling with Speedy. Uh, it's going okay. Newbury is sinking. It's not ideal, but maybe we can capture it. There we go. Oh, some bounces on Speedy. Must be just the lighter shot from further away. Not quite doing the job. And Minerva is just about dead in the water. Let's set the aim for Milford's sails. Our rear guard has joined the battle. So this is our troop ship, which is very risky. And where is Dolphin? Dolphin's not here yet, okay. All right. So now we can have Vengeance sail away and maybe get Newbury um, sailing again. Maybe. I'm not too confident. And right now I'm just basically trying to punch holes in Bilford's sails. Slow it down. Make sure my... Uh, fire ship can catch up to it that's really my main goal or even better my um troop ship because i do have the troops for it it won't be pretty getting there but i do have the troops i have the numbers And I'm hoping that all these pot shots at Milford will just distract it enough to avoid killing any of my ships. Slowing it down would be great. Taking down a mast would be great. All right, Dewberry sunk. Let's see if we can catch up to... No, nothing really to catch up to. I've got to watch these carefully and make sure I don't do anything stupid that costs me a ship. And I'm just going to try to keep my distance because any of my ships facing a broadside from... Milford are gonna have a bad time. Wind changed to east, okay. This is gonna be a challenge. I'm gonna need Dauphin to get in there without getting destroyed and it's such a small light ship that it's going to be a challenge a 
Let's see, I'm hoping that we'll just get lucky with one of these shots and take down a mast. I don't think we're even scaring the crew yet. Let's see. The cutter can sail upwind pretty effectively. Looks like it's mostly bounces here. Yeah, Andrew Daria is not holding up. I'm trying to avoid being in uh, broadside range. That's my main concern with Dauphin. but I think I can pull it off. And then if Milford is destroyed, I think I can take Marigold. That's not too much of a concern. So close, so close. I don't want to do it too early. Here we go. That should do it. Should do the trick. I don't know, are there levels of fire? That seems like the most fire. I don't think you can get more fire than I currently have. Let's get Andrew Daria out of there. He's taking too many hits. And rudders down. It looks like there's a lot of fire. A lot of fire is good for me. Maybe it can get Marigold too. That would be cool. I mean, how much how much is the ship gonna take? It can't be too much more. There we go, pump is down. And it's still on fire. You can see the, um, what is it? The uh, armor bars starting to tick down. I think when we'll really see it go up is if it eventually hits the magazine. I'm not sure exactly how that's calculated in game um, when you actually get the explosion. But I think that's really what we're gonna have to wait for. Oh, you're using grape shot. That's why your range is so bad. Virginia's a decent ship. I just need more. More like her. I've only got really four real warships on me here. And yeah, this... I don't see the flames getting less so now my concern is really just not letting any of my ships die keeping everyone alive marigold is pretty substantial if i can get a troop ship over there i'd be thrilled There we go, there goes another mast, and Milford is done. I think I'm gonna bail from here. I don't know. Do I want to keep fighting, see what I can capture? I wish my troop ship wasn't so slow. Maybe I can capture Marigold. That would be a huge benefit for me. Or even one of these smaller ships and just sell it for the, uh, the prestige or whatever it is. Reputation. 
one of the generic video game currencies. One thing I've done in some other campaigns that I haven't done in this one yet is take a frigate, um, probably because I don't have any big enough ships yet to um, compensate for my frigates being smaller. But I'll take like a third rate or so, uh, maybe even a smaller frigate, armor it up, load it up with the heaviest carronades I can, um, and then use that ship to get right up close and personal and just deal a ton of damage. You know, I'm, I don't want to get Virginia too close to that burning wreck. I can see that going very poorly for me. Looks like they're just trying to escape, so I'm going to finish the battle there. Not lose anything else. See, so yeah, I lost one um, uh, officer there. And I paid for that ship. That was a... Probably after the upgrade, the ten thousand dollar ship. But we sunk the. Can't remember the name of the ship now. Doesn't matter because it's been sunk. So we've got three troop ships now. Minerva is a big one for us, and it's armed, which is very nice. Just wish it was faster. We'll we'll worry about that in the next one. So there we go. 2,070 or 700 money, 25 reputation, three career points. Let's see how we're going to spend those. Um, I want some cheaper techs. Let's see. Assortment's not a big deal for me. Reputation per battle. I can use that for sure. Purchase prices. Um, let's see. Officers. I want more officers. I want better officers. Uh, let's go cheaper officers, because I'm going to need some. All right, what I have here? 24 reserve. Naval patrol. Let's see who we can send. I want my odds very high. Let's do that one. And there we go. I'm not going to get greedy here. And move on to the next stage. A letter mysteriously appears in your packet of correspondence. Captain, yesterday evening, fishermen spotted a large ship with a broken mast and tangled rigging flying a British flag just over the horizon. Perhaps a captain with some guts could make her strike her colors before she's discovered and rescued. John Hancock assures us you can be trusted. Godspeed, Captain. Let's do it. I like it. So we've got... Let's see... No damage to our ships, not even anyone lost, and got 8,300. Good. We sunk their ship. Naval patrol, light damage, took some crew um, on a few of our ships, but we sunk two of theirs and another 8,300 money. Continental Journal, just reporting on our successes with the Milford. And what is this battle? Wounded game. Powerful enemy ship, crippled. One ship, we get to send two ships at it. So I'm going to send my two best ships. Um, who? Hmm, I want faster ships. That's what I'm going to do. Let's see. 28 guns, 30 guns, slower. Yeah, I'm going to send this one for sure. Get Hugo Horvath as our officer there. Let's use the reserve. Make sure we've got adequate crew here. And the Hancock, same thing. Now let's actually take a look at the Admiralty. I don't often do this. I don't look at this as much as I should. I've got 26 pounder guns just hanging out. And then land weapons. I've got a ton here. Got some cannons I don't need. A thousand sea service muskets. Yeah, let's let's sell some of those, I'm sure. Get 15,000 for it? I don't know, let's just sell a chunk right now. I don't really know why. I don't have a precise reason I'm doing this. A 6th rate sloop is the best ship I can buy right now. So I'm going to save that up. 
Oh, you know what? I can upgrade ships. This is going to be big. Do I want a faster ship? That doesn't honestly make it much faster. Hardened hull. No, I'm not. I'm not actually going to... Oh, I can... Um, let's check out the upgrades here. Where's my gun carriage upgrade? Gun carriages are my favorite upgrades. Because all you do is lose weight. And that makes you faster. And I love fast ships. And then daring. Let's do the same thing. Let's uh, lighten the gun carriages there. And anything we should add on the upper deck. We can get up to nine pounder king's guns on the deck. But what's the range? 800. And we're looking at 950 here. I like to have range. That's 118 second reload. This one's only 107 for 5 damage. 5 damage. These are tough. I don't I don't really know the right answer here. Um, the carronades are always interesting. Only 800 yards. They don't penetrate much when you compare them to the Armstrong's gun. Armstrong gun can penetrate much more reliably out to 500. When you compare that to the EIC pattern, it's actually, you know, not that much worse out to 500 or so. Let's do it. We've got a nine pounder um, as the main gun. Those carronades could be nice to have up close. All right, I think I've got my crew officers all set. And uh, let's go for it. So just two ships sending Hancock and Daring. If you've got uh, suggestions for ship names, let me know, and I'll uh, update them for the next video. There she is. Look at those huge masks. masts. That's the British warship we've been searching for. That is not a ship of the line, not even a frigate. It's an armed merchantman and badly damaged. It's not what we were after, but I'll still take it. Let's go full sails. Daring is a fast ship. I love it. 13 speed. I feel like there's got to be a twist here. I don't remember this mission. I might not have played this one in my first playthrough of this campaign. Yeah, there we go. There's the twist. What do we got? Speaker and Tenedos. So who are we going to have board? Let's have Hancock board. And let's position Daring as kind of the uh, blocking force here. Actually, let's look at the guns here. No, let's let's have Hancock block because it's heavier armed. We'll have Daring go on pursuit. First, I was thinking of having um, Hancock board because it has a lot more crew, but I think it's a light enough crew that we can still have Daring do it. It's down to one mass, or it's got the main mass down. 12 crew. I'm going to capture Margaret, but I'm hoping to capture one of these other ships as well. One thing I would like to see more of um, is that when you capture a ship, you can spend prestige to add it to your fleet. Or you can gain prestige from just handing it over to the Admiralty. But you can't get money without spending your prestige first. I feel like there should be a little bit of balance there. All right, let's match speed. There we go, we've got crew shock. Let's board. Ooh, 
No, you idiots. Do not fire at my own ship. And let's park the Hancock there. Margaret has surrendered. Send the smaller detachment out. And then let's get Daring into this fight. Not that Margaret's going to be able to go anywhere very fast. Doesn't even have any guns. Where are you going, Hancock? And yeah, let's bring Daring around. Speed this up. There we go. Now speaker is in range. Daring is coming around. So we got the first few volleys off. No crew dead yet. I'm actually going to sail into the wind and then use the wind to raise the elevation of Daring's guns. I do need to be wary of Daring having low crew. It's going to be less effective. Um, very vulnerable to boarding. And I'm guessing they'll tire out quicker, though. I'm not sure. Let's get Hancock moving a little quicker. Oh, there we go. Still had it on grape shot. That'll do it. And we've got fire coming in from Daring now as well. Not that they're hitting much. There we go. Took out a cannon on speaker. Not sure exactly what my strategy is here. I think I'm just going to try to take out speaker because it's the front one. Just do everything I can to wear it down. And then worry about... Uh, maybe capturing the second. There we go with some pretty sizable volleys there. We've got a broadside at close range. I think that's going to really put a hurt on this ship. It looks like they're doing some decent damage to us. Let's get up close and let those carronades do what they do. If we're able to keep speaker between us and the second ship, that's going to limit how effectively they can fire at us as well. There we go, another gun down. Looks like the pump is damaged as well. Can't tell what kind of guns they have on that. Look like they're doing a solid amount of damage. Try to avoid turning while the volley's underway. Makes it much less accurate. And here come, I think those are the um, heavy carronades we put on Daring right before this battle. I think that's what was just firing there. But Daring's got a pretty solid hull. I think it can handle this. If I can keep Daring kind of in front of Speaker, I'll try to take a have a better angle 
where maybe I have a better shot at they do than they do at me. And Hancock can duel with um, Tenedos, no problem. I think we'll take, I'd take that battle straight up every time. And Daring's very maneuverable, very fast. So I can keep trying to maneuver and make sure I'm in a better position. Now, we could just retreat our fleet and call it a day, but I think we've got the opportunity for a lot more here. If Hancock can hit anything. One thing I'm considering is trying to get Daring between the two ships, fire out of both sides with the heavy carronades at, at, uh, all at once. But I've got to see if I can get in a good position to do that without exposing myself to too much fire. So let's see, we're almost directly into the wind now for Daring. And with Speaker as well. So I can't turn through now. I think I have pretty experienced crews on these ships as well. Let's actually turn Daring around. And same with Hancock. Punched a little hole in the sail there. They're kind of lost, drifting backwards. Be great if there was a collision. They had some trouble there. And they're thankfully missing with most of those shots. But it appears I am as well. Now, if I can get the advantage, I can board with Hancock. It's got enough crew on it that I can win that fight. I'm not trying to target any specific part of the ship right now. Unless I've really got an advantage and can pick a ship apart, I don't think it's that useful. Especially when you, uh, you're you in a situation where if you're aiming for the mast, you're more likely to just miss straight up, I think. Let's speed this up a little bit. Lost a gun on Daring. Lost four guns on Dan Daring. Wow. That was a nice, nice volley from Hancock. Daring is now hitting both of them. This ship has some heavy guns on it. I saw a 36 damage pop up on Hancock. There we go, rigging shock. That's what we needed to see. So let's move the battle away from this ship. They're going to be much less maneuverable now. And might even be sinking. That's sitting pretty low in the water. I 
There we go. That looks nice. And this ship is on fire. So that's likely not going to be the one we capture. Assuming it explodes soon. At the very least, it's going to make them much less effective in combat. Alright, the pump is broken on speaker. So speaker's got uh, flooding and the pump is broken. That ship probably isn't going to last long. Let's actually hold Hancock right there. All right, so it looks like speaker's got the pump back. Oh. Not capturing that ship. I'd like to capture one. Not if I make them all explode, though. That was a costly exchange for me. And I'm going to turn, try to get out of the way of this one. I was hoping to see more misses from them. Doesn't appear to be the case. Now let's aim for the mast. Hancock is getting there eventually, just not quickly. Now, Speaker's going to be trapped up against the shore here. Let's get Daring out of here. Daring's taking too much damage. Daring's magazine is red. I don't want to see that. That ship explodes. I'm going to be very upset. There we go. I think speaker's worn down enough that I can try to board now. I'm going to try to square up and board. All right, slowing down to regular time so I can manage this. And then let's match speed. So it's going to drop speed a little bit. There we go. Took out a bunch of guys in that round. Hopefully a few guns too, because they're now... Pounding into my side. Only lost two guns on the Hancock so far. Do you need to get a little closer? Uh, I'd like to just see them surrender. be much nicer than me having to board.
Nobody's gonna have a good time if that happens. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Darren got out, which is great. Guys, we don't have to do this. I wish they would miss from this range. It would be very nice. Let's get a little closer. Can't be far off. There we go. There we go, the boarding ropes. In all this, I only have nine crew dead on the Hancocks. So that's not too bad. It's honestly not that bad. I mean, those guys might disagree, but I think it's a fair trade for a ship. And that's some serious damage to our hull now, getting down to 82%. But we're boarding now. Should be chopping through their crew pretty quick. Guessing they've got to surrender soon. No, they are, they are fighting for quite a while here. They're putting up a good fight. But their morale's got to be... Just about out. There we go. The speaker is now mine. There we go. So we captured the Margaret and the speaker. 10,000 supply. Let's take a look at what this ship is like that we just acquired. All right. Hancock. Daring. Daring took a lot of damage there. But I'm glad it didn't blow up. I saw the magazine was red. Let's see. Speaker is a sixth-rate Corvette. Margaret is an unrated merchant ship. So I'm going to sell Margaret to the Admiralty. Speaker's getting added to my fleet. I'll repair it. I won't crew it yet. Um, but yeah, our, our ships did well. Let's see, what can we add to Hancock? I like I like Sea Wolves. I think that's useful more often because you're always sailing, you're rarely boarding. And repair the crew, or uh, reinforce the crew, get a few extra crewmen on Daring. And we are all set. I think that puts us in good a good place for the end of this chapter. Got 1,400 money, eight reputation in addition to what we captured. So let's end this chapter. We began our fight without ships, weapons, or funding. Over the past year, we have built up our fleet and learned how to defeat the vaunted Royal Navy step by step. Throughout our victories, we have proven that we are now a formidable force to be reckoned with. So what do we have? The Battle of Turtlegut Inlet and the Battle of Block Island. I'm going to call out here for today. I had a couple successful battles. Thanks again for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please go ahead and subscribe. And uh, have a good one.